Hi there. This is Rock Boy coming to you, and I know in class today you are looking at different relative dating principles. Um, and what I'd like to do here is I'd like to explain them once more for you, maybe give you a, a different perspective on what they are and how we use them. Uh, so I hope you have your notebook open, and in your notebook you might want to take some notes about things that I say. The first one is the principle of superposition. And this is probably one of the easiest ideas to remember, in that when we look at layers of rocks, and in this picture, this is a picture of the Grand Canyon, we see different layers of rocks here, and that's kind of what I have in this diagram right here. I better get my pen on. Right? There we go. Okay. And if you look at this diagram right here, we have three different layers of rocks, A, B, and C. A is on the bottom, B is in the middle, C is on the top. According to this rule, what's on the bottom is oldest, what's on the top is youngest. So if I were to sequence these rocks, I would say A is oldest, B is next oldest, C is the youngest. Okay? Simple idea. The next idea is the principle of original horizontality. And I've got another picture here, and you can look at, you see different layers of sedimentary rock. When these layers are originally laid down, they are laid down in horizontal beds. They are not laid down in beds that are tilted or folded or anything like that. And so if we see layers of horizontal or layers of sedimentary rock that are not horizontal, we know something happened after they were laid down to create that. And we'll be taking a look at a little bit of that um, in a few minutes. The next one is the principle of inclusion. And inclusion are pieces of rock that are included in a different type of rock. And so you've got two diagrams here. In this first one here, you've got granite, and you've got pieces of sandstone that are in the granite. And on the, on the diagram right here, you've got pieces of granite that are in the sandstone. And the way this works, the rock body that contains inclusions of pre-existing rock is younger than the rocks from which the inclusions came from. So if I look at this, because the sandstone is in the granite, that means this is older and this would be younger. And the opposite's true here. This is Ooh, Rock Boy made a mistake. This is older, and this would be younger, because the granite is in the sandstone. It means the granite had to be here before the sandstone formed. Okay. Cross-cutting. Cross-cutting, sometimes we see igneous features that cut across layers of rock. We call them dikes. Um, or uh, they could be intrusions, sometimes it's faults. But whatever cuts across another rock body is younger than what they cut. Or in a, to summarize that, the cutter is younger than the cutty. And so here, if I've got a lava flow here, a lava flow comes in between, that means it has to be um, younger than the rocks that it formed. And we'll show you examples of that. Here, in this case, the dark, this rock right here, is younger than the gray, um, what is that, metamorphic rock. The gray metamorphic rock, and then these lighter gray dikes are the youngest event because they cut the dark rock, and they cut the metamorphic rock. And again, we'll see examples of that coming up. Um, unconformities represents periods of erosion, uh, and there are three different types, and erosion is any kind of uneven weathered surface that you see, and you have disconformity, an angular unconformity, and a nonconformity. Uh, angulars are easy to see because you've got rock that's coming in at an angle, it's cut off, and then you have rocks that are layered on top of it. Okay, and in this case, generally, both rocks are um, sedimentary. 
in a disconformity, you've got sedimentary rock and you have your erosion surface and then you have sedimentary rock again. So this is sedimentary, this is sedimentary, and you have an erosion surface. Okay? A nonconformity, here's your nonconformity here. I've got sedimentary rock on top, and I've got either igneous or metamorphic, some kind of crystalline rock. And so there's, we say nonconformity, there is no agreement between these two rocks. And I'll show you pictures of that also. Uh, when we look at geologic maps, rocks have some kind of a, a symbol, and you're going to get a copy of this that you can put in your notebook. But when you see the rocks of different symbols like this, they represent um, the names of rocks here. A fault is usually just a straight line. If I have contact metamorphism, you'll see the, the boundary, and then you have little stars on the side indicating what side of the rock is metamorphosed. Um, here I would be looking at an intrusion coming from that direction, and this is the older rock on this side. Okay? So we've got symbols that represent different kinds of rock. So here is a sample cross-section. You're going to be looking, in fact, this is number one from your worksheet tomorrow. Uh, and my question to you is, how would you sequence these events, A, B, C, D, and E? What's oldest, what's youngest? And what rules would you use for your evidence? Well, number one, I look at B, D, E, and C are all layers of rock. They're sedimentary. C is on the bottom. B is on the top. Therefore, what I'm going to say is C is oldest, then E, then D, and then you've got a question. I see A cuts through here, and then it doesn't cut through. Okay, how do you interpret that? Is A older or younger than B? And what I would say here is A is the next, and then B is the last event here. Uh, this would be cross-cutting. The layers D, E, and C, this is superposition. The fact that they're all horizontal, you know, that is what I would use to describe that. Last picture that you have here should look familiar. Okay, you've got a contact running here. You've got a feature coming up like that. And then you have one rock here. You've got this is different. And then you have this up here. Now, if I was going to try to talk about this picture, what happened first? Probably A. You've got layers of sediment here that were deposited, turned into rock. This igneous intrusion happened next, but I don't see it extending up into rock layer C. So this happened, and if I've got sedimentary rock here, this looks like it's also sedimentary rock. So I've got sedimentary sedimentary, what does this line right here represent? It's an unconformity. What kind of unconformity is it? Right, it's a disconformity. And then C is on top. C was deposited later. So in the quarter of events, A is older than B, and B is older than C, this period of erosion happened here. Um, so maybe that'll help you in talking about the picture this week. Thank you.